Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I walk through some cool tools, completely unsponsored, uh, that I have found throughout the year, and I do an honest review summary at the end of each of these videos. I've been doing this for three years, so if there is a technology that you don't see in this season's Honest Review series, make sure you check down below in the description to see all of the others that I have done. All right, and so the technology we are going to be reviewing today is... If you are interested in finding out my honest review about this technology, make sure you stick around. Uh, all this product was built based on the experiences I had in the industry. Past 20 years been in the data management uh, industry, uh, right from Accenture, PeopleSoft of the world, to actual solving the problem of all states and Zurich. So decided that uh, you know all this experience should go into the product. Uh, build the product with the visionary and uh, you know here we are this is charles bachman vp of sales for raw cubes um i have about 15 years of extensive experience in the consulting side of cloud solutions um i've been now uh, a leader with raw cubes over the last year and we are going to market with a very strong product of data blaze and uh i will also share this screen time today with kem and deepak kem please yeah Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Charles. Uh, my name is Kim Chan, and uh, you know I've been into IT industry for the last more than two decades, and I've been a hardcore developer starting from you know uh, the Java and and going went through the you know design and architecture the the solutions where we are you know utilizing the graph technology where you know we are we are integrating the data from different sources and and aligning it it with our knowledge graph, and then having a graph analytics platform where you know the the business users can you know do the data discovery themselves without you know depending too much on on the tech, technical folks like me so uh this is uh about database as uh you know that's our end-to-end -end data management platform driven by you know knowledge graph at, at you know you know by by using knowledge graph we are bringing the you know intelligence on onto or intelligence or automation while bringing the data into your data store so it, it has all the you know the features which are uh, you know uh, makes a complete data management platform like we have the data ingestion to you know we can almost you know ingest the data virtually from any source right whether it is from a databases or from a you know the file systems or from APIs sensors you know or or, or from a you know the network protocols so this it has the you know inbuilt connectors for to bring the data from virtually all the sources. Well, and, and when then, you're ingesting it, is it ingesting it into a graph database? Is that what you're doing? Is when people are you know putting in their their data in whatever format, you take on the ETL basically into your graph format. Is that how it works? Yeah. So okay, it it works in you know you know because database is a very flexible uh, platform where you know like you you have the data which is you know at sources it could be in our DMS systems. Now how how we you know bring the automation and intelligence while ingesting the data with the help of knowledge graph. So mm -hmm. as a, as an out of the box offering, database comes with a you know the foundation knowledge graph for the domain which we are targeting. So so. Let's let me take an example for a MES system, for example. So, when we implement database in a manufacturing execution system, so so database comes up with a foundation knowledge graph for for a manufacturing industry, and it has all the predefined you know the standard terms and relationships. Oh, and so it's a preconceived graph that you have for specific disciplines. Industry. Yes. I gotcha. Okay. But yeah. uh, Ashley, so now, just to make sure that uh, not just the it is the foundation of which we build. But, uh, you know, as you were asking, were, which data would be within the graph or graph database or it will be on the on the different sources. So foundation built and when you bring the data, the data can be in various stores, but the, the references will be stored in graph database just to make sure that you. So uh, one question I have is I saw on the previous slide that you work with WAND. I know one mm -hmm. very well. Yes. So okay. are you using the pre-created ontologies from WAND and are you extending them or are they just the ones from WAND? Yeah. So yeah. So as 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 I mentioned, like you know, V comes up from a you know foundation knowledge graph. And that foundation knowledge graph we derive from from the you know the ontologies like from WAND touch, you know, mm -hmm. WAND ontologies. 
Mm-hmm. So some of them we already have built it, but you know most of most of our ontologies we have tied up with with band technologies, and and from there we we get it. We are very close so, with yeah with the ROS. So building those foundation uh, ontologies is important in some cases. Like we will give you references, and then there is a reason why we wanted to have one because they they have almost two hundred odd uh, you know uh, di- different industries which they have covered. But at the same time. If we had to go to a company like just giving the Allstate, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, the taxonomy is built in Excel or built it in, uh, you know, Wikipedia. So we can extract and build our foundation. Good to know. That's, and that's ex- and thank you for that, Deepak. And Ken, just just to confirm, because um, the last time I used anything from Wand and listening to the words and the structure you're using, these are RDF based standard uh, types of knowledge graphs. They're not property graphs. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, so okay. from there, like we support both, like mm-hmm. RDF as well as property graph. So, mm-hmm. so like you know, the the way it works, the whole flow is like we have a foundation knowledge graph. Now, when we bring the data from from the sources, let's say you have a data. Uh, I I take the one example for insurance company where we were bringing the data from you know the policy systems, the claim systems, and their customer systems, and and at the on the other side, we defined a foundation knowledge graph for 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 the insurance. And mm-hmm. while bringing the data from the sources, we align it with with our you know the foundation knowledge graph. And then while storing in the database is very flexible. Mm-hmm. Target you can select where you want to store the data. Whether you want to store the data in Neo Four J, like in a you know as a, as mm-hmm. a property graph, for example, or mm-hmm. you want to take it into a you know RDF format, like storing it in a you know. Neptune, AWS Neptune. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so that that both you know both like it's as as a as a customer or as end user, you can decide where you want to take your data. So, or one, as the, yeah, one thing I want to just stop and and just you know set set the stage for for something is I encounter a lot of people that are very intimidated about getting into knowledge graph because they think that they would have to build this giant graph themselves and then maintain it and then create all of the pipelines. And what a lot of people don't realize are there there are more and more offerings such as yours where you're taking the beauty and the great stuff you can get with graph and basically farming it out <laughs> to you yeah. all. And then you know you can just build out the graph when you need to do the analytics and then you can just flush the data after you're done because it's it's a, a pre-created graph and it's also a graph that is being managed by somebody else. So you don't have to take on all of that additional burden. You don't even really need, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you don't even need ontologists or knowledge graph engineers okay. at your yes. organization, right? Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. That's that that is our, you know, the out of the box feature which comes up with, with data plates. Like it comes up with a foundation knowledge graph as a as a customer. They don't have to worry about it. They they don't need to, you know, because we are already coming up with the our expertise and industry terms and their relationships are already defined for them. It's not just one the taxonomy. Like we are already partner with them, and you know we have very good, uh, you know, relationships with them as a, as a partnership. But mm-hmm. it's and then we have like for example, uh, you know, Snowmed for for especially mm-hmm. the, specifically mm-hmm. for a, you know the the medical terms and terminology, especially in the early European region. So we. Uh, you know, we we align our terms and and their relationships with with the you know Snowmad City, for example. Then on the other side, you have a schema.org, which is probably the largest repository of you know the the entities and and their you know uh, standard standard names. So and and we are and then then you have you know like for example FIBO, like for for financial and and banking operations. That's specific for a you know the the knowledge graph for a financial and and banking industry. So, so it's we, we are you know following all the industry standards for 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 uh, you know specific domains mm-hmm. and bringing that to our foundation knowledge graph. So, database is that that's the home where you know we we arrange all the you know the data pipelines, the you know knowledge graph, and and you know uh, the uh, data flows under the projects. So, for for multiple departments, for multiple clients, you can have number of projects like for example you defined a project for for a manufacturing department or a production department so everything related to production department remain inside the production project and with these projects i'm assuming that there are um, different rights and access that you can set 
Of course, yeah, okay, they are driven by rules and 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 permissions. Yes, great. thank you. And they are they are shareable as well. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you while while creating the project or any assets in 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 the database, you can you you have an option that whether you want to define it at a project level or a global level. The global means visible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, these are our, you know, uh, the uh, sources from where we can bring the data in, in, into Lake uh, using our, our database. We almost support all the, you know, the RDBMS systems, the applications, the, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, the uh, other, other, you know, the, even you see the GitHub as well. We, we support the GitHub, so we will we'll cover off of, of that. Great. And then we we have a data strategy as well, where you know you you, you can build your data strategies how nice. you want for for. A, for a, for a different department or a different kind of a customers. Yeah. For example, you want to create a strategy for, for a CRM data. So whenever the data is coming from a CRM system, it will follow this strategy. So so the you know source discovery when you you know you you, you used to define the you know uh, the sources and bring the data, ingest the data into the lake. And then you know you have a data profiling. You can do the profiling at a table level, at a column level, and it tells you what what is being ingested and what you have. What is the quality of the data which you have brought in, in, into your store? And if if you identify a lot of um, misfires, uh, mistakes, null values, things like that, can you correct them from this page, or do you have to go somewhere else to do that? Oh, uh, yo. So it it what it does is it it creates an exceptions log where mm. you are, you know mm. and see the exceptions what what are you know the exceptions are there or what what are the you know anomalies in in the data and then from there you you can select you want to rerun it ignore them overwrite mm. it or fix mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so yes well, that's good. That, this gives the confidence to your you know the data scientist data analysts that what what quality of the data you have in in your mm. lake and that's that's that gives you that idea yeah so yeah, and and for doing the data transformation, the you know, uh, and and it having a complex uh, data processing needs, you know, you we we have a you know data flow where you can define design your pipelines and then use all the standard you know the uh, uh, data transformation operations. What if do you if if I have my own data transformer, um, can I can I do that myself? Can I put my own in? Yes. Or, okay. So, yeah. Great. So if if you have your own transformation written in, in a, like for example in Java and 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 then you can bring those you know the transformation logic in into mm -hmm. our pipeline in mm -hmm. the form of a Java jar file. Okay. And and similarly, if you have written your your you know uh, the transformation logic in Python, then you can bring your Python script as well in, into the pipeline. So yeah. So if, if I'm understanding correctly, this left panel is almost like my step by step to get it in and processed and where I needed to be. Is that accurate? Yes. So here, this is our data transformation or data flow where, you know, you can define, you can see all of the data which you have ingested as part of our source discovery. And then here you can design your pipeline and, and then select the operations, whichever the operations you want to perform on, on, on the data. So, so that's our, you know, the, the data flow. And can you now can I, you go into the NLP one? Because I am a glutton yep, for NLP. I, so, so in in database, uh, we support both kind of uh, you know uh, the data processing, the data coming data coming from the you know the any sources, and also the document processing. Mm, when, when great. Okay. Doc, doc, document processing, whether you know the data is you can come in a in a you know a pdf form or it could be a web document or or you know it could be a word document mm -hmm. so so you can bring the data from from the documents and and what we do we we run our you know the nlp models on on that data and extract the terms and conditions from the textual data and align them with our you know the foundation knowledge graph mm -hmm. that's that is the you know uh, the beauty in, in the database you have you know the data processing, the NLP processing, as well as in while in in our data processing, you can also use your machine learning models as part of your data processing. Yeah, and so, and maybe if you don't mind jumping to the the knowledge graph piece to this, because all of this yeah, is going uh, in, it's being ingested into a knowledge graph, and how does that look? Uh, and how much? Yeah, okay, cool. So, it looks like I can change the the graph if I needed to, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You, great. Yeah. So, so here you have all the you know the graph nodes and and their relationships and the phrases you know and in a RDF format if I talk about mm -hmm. so it's like what is a subject object and predicate right mm -hmm. so so here you know you, you can define like okay this is the the 
predicate which which is going to you know this here you can select what what kind of a, you know the phrase you want to use so has a hair whether it's has a whether it's you know fixes or or you know you can define your own relationship that we call as a you know the augmentation of of the knowledge graph and can i make my own uh well you have it as a phrase but i would consider it you know like the relationship between nodes uh yeah, can, that looks yeah, like a finite yeah. list can i have my own yeah yeah you can right. add n number of nodes on your own here like, no not the nodes the relations i mean yeah yeah you, you can define your own here it, it's coming from a reference you know the service you can define your own okay uh, you know, the phrase which you want to provide and then you can define your own relationships as well what kind of a relationship you want to have oh great okay where you know you can get into what data has been you know so for example this uh, we were talking about the accelerator when you know uh, charles was there uh, charles was talking about so the accelerator this is the accelerator which we have built for github so what mm -hmm. this accelerator does it goes into your you know the github source code repository and and it extracts all the you know the data set information from from the source code itself not just you know because you know when when at an enterprise level, you have thousands of the applications, the services which are there in your, you know, the source code repository. But, but you know, after some time, you you tend to be, you know, struggling to to identify which service uses which table, which data, or mm -hmm. which data mm -hmm. is used by which you know application. And that that was the you know uh, a, a, a major challenge for some of our, some of the, our clients. So what we did is we have included our you know the GitHub connector in database. What it does goes into directly into your source code repository it extracts all the you know data set information the domain entities the relationships and then you know it brings that into your foundation knowledge graph that these are the business entities these mm -hmm. are the data sets which which you know are, are being used by your source code or your applications or apis then from that foundation knowledge graph then you you know here you have the all the you can get what kind of you know dependencies whether the dependencies among all the your modules the applications whether those dependencies are internal or external mm -hmm. so that 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 where you can do and and we call it as a you know and then for a if if you if i i have to you know re-engineer my uh you know the 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 applications then what what kind of a, you know the build order is going to be like for example i i have you know hundreds of the applications which are built on a monolithic architecture. Now I want to move on to the microservices based architecture. Now you need to understand what the ramifications of the decisions are. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, I like that. So this is one of my, you know, the module in, in my source code repository. Mm -hmm. Now what it is showing me is, is you know, the dependencies for this particular module. Mm -hmm. And if I want to see, you know, how this, uh, the whole build order is, is going to look like, then I can, you know, see in the tabular form where it gives like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, modules which are at, you know, level one dependency can start in parallel and then, mm -hmm. you know, dependency level two modules. That's, that's our data insight, which, which is mainly, a, you know, uh, it works on a graph analytics uh, pattern. Like, for example, this having this, you know, build order and all it, it works on a centrality graph model where, you know, mm -hmm. algorithm is used to find out, you know, the nearest, yep. uh, yeah, nearest uh, neighbor. For, yeah yeah nearest uh, modules and, and and you know how they are connected with mm -hmm. great you can, you can define the you know the degree of the central at you at what level you want to focus on and that's the other question i had and maybe that gets into you know the actual insights that you can derive is if let's say i am building out my own graph ml models um do you have some of the common graph ml algorithms in this or could I use my own um if like once I get through this stage everything is in the graph and now I want to use something other than shortest path or nearest neighbor or something like that maybe I want to use something different is that available to me or is that you know coming soon yeah so so like you know the shortest path nearest neighbor as, as you have mentioned the, the you know centrality uh graph and algorithms those are already there pre-built mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but and and if you have if you have some you know the custom uh, uh algorithms re requirement then we built it for 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 the customers like okay. for, for mes for example in a manufacturing execution system we built up you know proprietary uh a graph algorithm for them just to you know track the you know the materials arrival path for mm -hmm. for on a production floor 
mm-hmm. right from the procurement when you you know issue a procurement order from from your you know the purchase department and how much time it is going to 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 take to reach that you know material onto the production floor so that that algorithm like i mean finding the eta for example for a raw material onto the production floor that mm-hmm. we did with the help of you know our uh, proprietary graph algorithm which we have built for for, for our mes offering okay all right. So I want to make sure that it's very clear that it's not just we are building the knowledge graph for, for we are actually using the graph analytics to solve multiple challenges. So yeah, so so in in data insight, this is mainly on a you know the data which is coming from the relational systems or or from the mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, the the uh, databases and all. But this knowledge explorer is mainly works on it document data like when you bring the you know your textual data in the form of a document like word document the you know the pdf or web documents and you want to search what what all terms are are you know there in in, in the document so so like for example so, is, so so let me clarify so knowledge explorer is just for the unstructured text kind of information you're for, bringing for, in yes. or it's mainly for the qual data yes okay okay and and the next coming up in, in the database is the, you know, the qual and quant analysis, basically having it together. And that is, you know, our, our next coming. Oh, up interesting. Really so uh, what are you using for your sentiment analysis and some of the NLP? I mean, this is NLP, right? So what are, are you, do you have your own NLP built into the back end? Or are you using, like, I know you, you're you like a, an AWS partner. Are you using anything from like Comprehend or that sort of thing? Or... Uh, no, so we are using the libraries, like for example, the Stacy okay. is is one of. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yep. yeah. Yep. All good libraries. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Core NLP, Stacy. Yeah. I I do want to make sure. I'm glad um, that you brought up the the pipeline monitoring because, um, is this just the pipeline, or is this saying if I run my ETL, will it give me an error report if certain fields fail or something like that, or is it the whole pipeline? You know, it 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 gives you you know uh, the uh, what do you call it, like you know the operation level. Like mm-hmm. at, you see this, and then inside this pipeline, you have these five operations. Which operation has succeed, succeeded? Which operation has failed? And then you can see it. And then failed ones are I need to search where is the failed one. But then you know you you see the why it has been failed, and from there you get all the logs and everything. Right. So schema comparator is is already there, actually in there. Like when when we you know do the data ingestion incrementally, for example, and and like when if some schema is changed at, at a source level, it detects it. And and That's while designing, great. Yeah. yeah, and and, yeah. and while designing the pipeline, mm-hmm. you can you can you know provide your inputs like what what you want if if the you know schema changes are detected. Whether you want to fill the pipeline or mm-hmm, you, you mm-hmm. know bring the data and then highlight it and then yeah you can d- yeah I I love that.